Hello everyone, thank you for joining our session today. My name is Irina Rahimova and I am a senior lead consultant in Azure Australia. This session is going to be all about RGS Enterprise. This year we had two releases, version 10.8 was released in February and version 10.8.1 was just recently made available to all users in July 2020. A couple of months ago, we had a really great webinar on new features of RGS Enterprise 10.8. And if you haven't had a chance to attend that webinar, I would highly recommend you to go to Ezra Australia website and watch what's new in RGS Enterprise 10.8 that provides a great overview of new functionalities and capabilities of that release. Today, I am primarily going to focus on latest version, RGS Enterprise 10.8.1, which is, of course, built off functionality of previous releases and includes a lot of new features and updates, and I'm very excited to share those with you. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm sure you all know what RGS Enterprise is all about, but just a quick refresher. RGS Enterprise is a powerful platform. It's mapping, analytics, and geospatial data management system that, as you can see, consists of many components working together to provide different kinds of functionality to users. It enables any organization to use web services, make maps and applications, and importantly, share them from any device, anywhere, at any time. RGS Enterprise has been around for quite some time, for a number of years now. It runs on infrastructure you manage, and many organizations adopt and leverage the functionality this platform offers. We are going to cover different areas today. We will start with RGS Enterprise Portal, some new options and tools introduced there, uh, a lot of new improvements to portal administration, as well as some RGS server-related improvements. We will touch on RGS Enterprise Sites and discuss new apps and improvements to existing apps in Enterprise Portal. First of all, let's quickly recap a few updates and enhancements that 10.8 release offers. New member defaults allow setting up different user type and role for new members. New webhook trigger events enable administrators to monitor changes made to organization's roles, as well as ability to subscribe to specific events across all items, groups, or users. Pop-up notification prior to accessing portal and custom banner that displays information at the top and the bottom of the pages. Another capability is publishing hosted map image layer from your hosted feature layer. There are some improvements in drawing offline map areas that now allows you to draw a free shape polygon to define the area, and there are some feature service enhancements. Again, for more details on Enterprise 10.8 release updates, please make sure to watch what's new in RGS Enterprise 10.8 webinar on Ezra Australia website. Now, let's take a look at what's new in RGS Enterprise Portal in latest release. To start, changes in user interface, you will notice once you set up latest version of RGS Enterprise or upgrade your environment to this version. You will see these changes throughout the Enterprise portal when viewing organization settings, uh, viewing user profile, creating a content, sharing and moving items, and so forth. Also, at 10.8.1, there is an easy access to RGS Enterprise Sites, RGS Story Maps, and RGS Experience Builder, which is a quick way to start creating sites and apps from Create menu on the content page. As I mentioned earlier, in RGS Enterprise 10.8, there is a new Member Defaults tab where portal administrators could set a default user type and role for new members. In 10.8.1, you can also set the default add-on license assignment and group member defaults. For example, if new members of local government organization need to use RGS Navigator as a part of their daily task of inspecting assets, you don't need to go and assign the license to your new members individually. It's now set for you and your members by default. We can assign add-on licenses for such applications like RGS Pro, RGS Navigator, App Studio Developer Edition, Drone to Map, RGS Insights, etc. Previously, this would require a combination of Portal Admin API and Portal Home App settings. Now, 
it is incorporated into a single Portal Home application workflow. Two new options are now available for portal administrators creating groups in the organization. First, in order to protect the privacy of members of groups, we can now hide the list of group members. This option is particularly useful for public groups or in the example with the inspections project where you might have different contractors used uh, and you don't necessarily want to expose the full list of contractors, you will be able to hide the list of group members. Another group capability is to restrict members from leaving the group, which ensures that members remain in the group unless they are removed by group owner or group manager. This can be useful when we would like people who are assigned to project to be a part of the project until the project is completed. A new user type, Storyteller. As the name suggests, it offers the ability to make ArcGIS story maps. Storyteller is for those members of the organization who simply want to create stories using story maps. If you remember before Storyteller, each user would need creator or JS professional user type to make story map. Now this can be accomplished with just a storyteller user type. And since it allows view only access to the content created by others, uh, we can embed that content into our story map, which gives an easy way to leverage in our story maps, web maps, scenes and applications created by others in the organization. Moving on to the next feature, you have probably had a chance to experience it in RGS Online, Map Viewer Beta. Well, Map Viewer Beta is now available in RGS Enterprise 1081 as an additional install. It's a next generation map making tool that provides enhanced experience for key map authoring workflows. Map Viewer Beta has a fresh new look and layout for designing maps with the advantages like enhanced labeling, new and organized color ramp, instant map feedback when applying filters. Uh, tools for key workflows, such as adding layers, changing base maps, printing, and saving options allocated on the left, and refining tools, such as symbology, applying filters, configuring pop-ups for layers, labeling, etc., they are available on the right. As I mentioned, Map Viewer Beta requires an additional install. Once installed, you as an administrator will have the option to enable and disable it under organization settings in Enterprise Portal. There are a few different ways to access Map Viewer Beta. Firstly, we can open a layer in Map Viewer Beta from overview tab of the layer itself. Next option is opening Map Viewer Beta from App Launcher. And another way is by clicking on the map tab in portal where you will see this option to open map your beta. If you decide that you no longer want to offer map your beta in RGS enterprise portal, even temporarily, you can disable it and members will not be able to see option to open map your beta. Now let's talk about those features and improvements that will make portal administrators life easier. Starting from 10.8, ArcGIS Enterprise can be configured in read-only mode through Portal, which basically blocks users from making changes to content, creating or saving items, or modifying any administrative settings. Prior to 10.8, in order to prevent experiencing downtime or data loss, we would usually set individual components of ArcGIS Enterprise, for example, ArcGIS Server and ArcGIS Data Store into read-only mode. However, this would still allow some operations like creating items or editing data in Enterprise Portal. Now, when read-only mode is enabled in Portal, no modifications are allowed on content and settings in the Portal, federated servers in ArcGIS Data Store, and the users are permitted with view-only access to portal. This can be useful when making system updates, installing patches, and when upgrading RGS Enterprise. Other capabilities available with newer version of RGS Enterprise are Access Notice and Information Banner, which allows administrators to control and display information to all users that access our Enterprise Portal. These were introduced at version 10.8, and there are some improvements in Enterprise 10.8.1. 
First, custom access notice is a pop-up notice uh, that must be accepted before accessing RGS Enterprise. And this notice is useful to get users to accept terms and conditions or to acknowledge uh, disclaimer and privacy information. A message will be displayed to members upon signing in and they can only proceed to access the site if they accept the terms of notice. At version 10.8.1, you can specify a separate access notice for organization members and another notice for broader audience means uh, for those users who are not members of our organization but still access our portal. Custom information banner appears at the top and bottom of RGS Enterprise portal to display information to users. The banner can be used to display information such as status of our organization, for example, if portal is undergoing maintenance or our organization is set to read-only mode, some important notices and security classification levels. The information banner is now configured within RGS Enterprise Portal organization settings on the security tab, so there is no longer a need to update it through a backend configuration file. And at version 10.8.1, the information banner can also be configured to show on sites created with RGS Enterprise sites. At version 10.8.1, you can now configure automated emails to be sent from your portal. Configuration of email settings require integration of portal with your organization's SMTP server in the RGS Portal Administrative API. These settings can be used to send out email notifications from RGS Enterprise Portal about password ex policy updates and license expiry notifications for user types, add-on licenses, or organization license expirations. Also, when a member forgets their password, they can request a reset password email to be automatically sent to them directly. Next capability is a massive game changer. Content migration workflow is the ability to move items between portal sites. We have had heaps of requests from a lot of different clients for this functionality. And here you go, starting from 10.8.1, you have the option to migrate content from groups between different RGS enterprise portals. The process is done through sharing the data item to the group, then exporting the package of group content through Portal A's REST API endpoint, and then importing it to RGS Enterprise Portal B again through REST API endpoint. Once import is completed, new content will be created in the designated group in the new RGS Enterprise Portal. This feature is great if you are moving content from development to staging to production environments. You can even use it to move content between two disconnected environments. For example, if offices are located in different geographic locations on two different portals um, that are completely unaware of each other, we don't have to create any link or collaboration between them. We can simply move content or items from first portal into the second portal. Let's have a quick demo of content migration workflow. Here I have RGS Enterprise Portal 1081, where a number of items need to be moved across to a different portal. First step is to share the items to the target group created for purposes of this demo, export group content. We're going to call this environment as originating portal. There are a couple of other items of interest as well, and they have already been shared to the group. So in total, now we have four items that we're going to transfer to another portal. Let's call that portal receiving portal, which is our Osri demo environment. Just to note that these two portals are hosted in different environments, totally unaware of each other. Uh, import group content is a designated group to receive the items. Once all data is shared to the group, we will need to generate export package that contains all items. Uh, since entire workflow is done over REST API, uh, I am going to log in to REST endpoint of portal providing credentials. Earlier, I copied group ID and uh, I'm going to access that group's sharing REST API. So going to content, appending groups to the URL and providing that group ID. 
you can see that we have four items in this group. Now, in order to generate export package, we are going to call export group content operation. This package will consider item dependencies. Therefore, it's important to note that all related data must be shared to the same group as well for this workflow to succeed. For example, you can't just share your web application only. You must share the associated web map and hosted feature layer as well. The export package is now ready to be imported into our receiving enterprise portal. This is also done through the REST API. So here I am on Osri demo portal, and I'm going to access sharing REST API to complete the steps. Uh, let me just go to that URL, sharing REST, login, providing credentials. So firstly, we must add export package into the receiving environment using add item operation because the import call will not upload the package itself. So we need to add it first. This will generate an item with the ID that we're going to use in just a couple of seconds. Since we need to move items to the designated group, we are going to access REST API of specific group. I'm going to provide group ID. Now we are ready to call import operation and provide export package item ID. If the items already exist, you will be given the option to overwrite the current items. When they are imported, their item IDs are maintained, URLs are updated to reflect the new environment, and export package itself will be deleted by portal. Looks like the items have been successfully imported. Let's refresh the group content to confirm. We can see that all four items are successfully created within designated group content. The URLs are updated to reference new environment. Hosted feature layer has been created. That's all good. And we can confirm by opening the web map. Keep in mind that this workflow is only supported starting from RGS Enterprise Sunny 1, which means that both portals need to be at least at this version. This was a demonstration of content migration workflow. Now let's get back to slides. On the RGIS server side, now when you have licenses coming up to the expiration date or currently expired for any of your RGIS server roles or server add-on licenses, license expiration notice will appear in RGIS server manager. You can dismiss that notice. However, you should definitely take actions on that warning. Shared instances concept was introduced at version 10.7. This concept allows one-to-many relationship between SOC processes, which means that the service will no longer have its own dedicated pool, but instead it will use ArcSoc from the shared pool. Once the service is done handling a request, that ArcSoc goes back to the pool where it can then be used by any other service in the shared pool. Shared instances can significantly help with memory consumption and server resources, which in turn allows you to have more web services published to the ArcGIS server site. So there are some improvements to shared instances. Now, when publishing compatible service from ArcGIS Pro 2.5, you can indicate whether the layer will use shared or dedicated instance pool. Previously, we would first publish the layer then go back to server manager and change instance type in ArcGIS server itself. Now this can be done while publishing. Of course, later on, you will be able to change the setting again if it's required. Also, any new service published to ArcGIS server site at version 10.8 and 10.8.1 will now use shared instances by default for any service that is compatible. 
The range of services that can use shared pool has been extended as well at 1081. Services that have server object extensions and server object intersections, SOEs and SOIs, can now use shared instances pool. RGS Enterprise sites have been around since version 1061, and it's a really great way to tailor the look and feel of JS data for end users that maybe aren't familiar with portal or JS content. So this is a good way to display certain data to people who need to be able to see it through a really familiar website and pages concept. There are several new enhancements in ArcGIS Enterprise sites, including a little bit more streamlined user interface to deploy those sites, as well as improvements in content management workflows. First thing you may notice in ArcGIS Enterprise sites is the updated user interface. The workflow for creating and managing all sites is now more efficient. You can also quickly see how many sites have been created, including the URLs, and how many pages are part of each site. The Sites Overview page now includes a site panel for accessing recent content more quickly. Another improvement is the ability to upload content using URL and by selecting existing items, which enables non-JS users who are part of core team to add content without needing to navigate within ArcGIS Enterprise. Another cool feature is that you can now clone sites and pages to create additional versions of layout. Cloning is a useful practice when you want to create a new version of a site, and it can be used as a quick starting point for those organizations who use ArcGIS Enterprise sites a lot and maybe need to get a little bit more of uh, standardizations across the sites. This way, the font, general layout, and main formatting is already taken care of, and it will save you a lot of time reproducing work that has already been done. And lastly, as I mentioned earlier, there is an option to enable information banners in the sites created within RGS Enterprise sites. Next, moving on to new and existing apps. A lot of applications work with RGS Enterprise. Some of them may not be a core component, but they are configured and integrated with Portal 2 function. You are probably familiar with some of the apps introduced in RGS Enterprise at version 10.8. RGS Mission which is a new server role that is a tactical situation awareness and mission management solution that allows team members to track, monitor, and coordinate movements through location sharing and peer-to-peer -peer communication. RGS Mission provides the ability to assign teams, designate maps, and share documents for mission operations. RGS Notebook Server Manager app, also introduced at Tanate, provides user interface to notebook server site inside the portal for many common administrative tasks and resources. You can use Manager to monitor key statistics about usage and performance of notebook server, to maintain and adjust system settings, and to use system logs for troubleshooting. In 10.8.1, notebook authors and administrators can now schedule ArcGIS notebooks to run remotely as a scheduled task. This might be a very good opportunity for portal administrators who can now schedule tasks to automate some of the admin workflows like um, deleting users or removing content that's outdated and so forth. ArcGIS Quick Capture, ArcGIS Workforce, and ArcGIS Tracker are now coming pre-installed with ArcGIS Enterprise, and they no longer require a separate installation. What new applications do we have in ArcGIS Enterprise 1? Some of you might have worked with ArcGIS Experience Builder in ArcGIS Online. Now, ArcGIS Experience Builder is a new app in ArcGIS Enterprise 10.8.1. It enables you to create flexible, dynamic applications to support your workflows and bring together uh, web apps, dashboards, surveys, story maps, and more, all in one unified location. You can use flexible templates and layouts to create single and multi-page apps with interactive widgets that combine tools, text, media, 2D, and 3D data. We all are familiar with classic Esri story map templates. 
there have been a lot of requests to integrate Story Maps with Portal. So now there is a brand new app that comes pre-installed in ArcGIS Enterprise Sunny One, ArcGIS Story Maps app, which is a new generation of ArcGIS storytelling tools, delivering a more elegant and streamlined experience for making and sharing Story Maps. On a final note, ArcGIS Enterprise is a massive platform. And of course, during this session, we were not able to cover everything. There are a lot more. For example, improvements to specific server roles like GeoAnalytics, GeoEvent, Event, Image Server, synchronized bulk publishing layers, replace layer functionality, improvements in distributed collaboration, and so much more. Please check out the links in the sidebar to find additional information. Hopefully this session gave you a little bit understanding into new capabilities of Tenet One, and you were able to take away something useful for yourself. If you have any further questions, please engage with your account managers. Thank you very much for being here with us today and your interest in RGS Enterprise Platform. Enjoy the rest of Osri.